Hello, today I will explain and code Generative Adversarial Networks or GANs for short. If you have seen computer generated images, then you have witnessed the magic of generative models. One popular generative modeling is GAN. At its core, a GAN consists of two neural networks, the generator, which generates data, and the discriminator, which evaluates the generated data. Generated data is sometimes called fake data. These two networks are trained together simultaneously. The generator continuously improves its ability to create better data, while the discriminator gets better at distinguishing real data from generated ones or fake ones. Over time, the generator becomes so good that the discriminator can't differentiate between real and generated data. Why are GANs so groundbreaking? Mostly because they have opened up avenues for creating stunning visuals. More than that, GANs play an instrumental role in data augmentation, where data samples are rare. For deep learning models to work well, you might need a huge amount of data. Research has shown that it is sometimes better to augment data using GANs and then train the deep learning model. Anyway, as always, I like to keep things simple. I will use a synthetic dataset so that the code remains simple, yet elegant in demonstrating the concept of generative adversarial networks. I am importing necessary libraries for building and training a GAN using PyTorch. This segment checks whether the machine has CUDA available, which is NVIDIA's GPU API for general purpose processing. If CUDA is available, then the device variable will be set to CUDA, meaning the code can leverage GPU acceleration. If not, computations will be done on the CPU. So this code is good both for CPUs and GPUs. In this code segment, I focus on creating a synthetic dataset that has three columns. I made sure that the first column had random values, then the second column equals what we have in the first column times two. The third column is what we have in the second column multiplied by two. That means if the first feature of a row of the data has 0.5, then the second feature will be 1.0 and the third feature will be 2.0. That is, the second feature is twice as much as the first feature, the third feature is twice as much as the second feature. When we are done with training the entire GAN, our generator should be able to generate data points or rows such that the feature relationships of the second and third columns being twice as much as the corresponding previous column holds. Great, we have our training data ready. Here is my generator. Notice that the generator is pretty simple. The generator has a simple feed-forward architecture, an input layer with three neurons, because our input data has three columns, a hidden layer with 15 neurons, and a ReLU activation function an output layer with three neurons because the generated data points will have the same number of features as our original training data. We return self.model with the parameter x. The input x is passed through the defined model and the output is returned. That is, given a vector, which is often referred to as noise or latent vector, the generator learns how to create another vector that resembles the training training data. Here is the discriminator. My discriminator has a similar architecture like the generator, but with a critical difference in the output layer. It has an output layer with a single neuron followed by a sigmoid activation function. This design choice means that the discriminator outputs a probability indicating how likely the input data is to be considered real as opposed to be generated. The discriminator's role in a GAN is to differentiate between real and generated data. Given an input vector or a data point, it outputs a probability indicating its belief that the data point is from a real dataset. 
In this segment, we are focusing on initializing the generator and the discriminator models, defining the loss function, and setting up the optimizers for both the generator and the discriminator. Here, the binary cross entropy BCE loss function is chosen as the criterion for training the discriminator. This is a common choice for GANs since the discriminator outputs a probability indicating whether the input is real are generated. The BCA loss measures the difference between the true levels and the predicted probabilities. In this case, our true levels are 1s and zeros, 1s representing real and 0 representing generated. We have both generator optimizer and discriminator optimizer with a learning rate of 0 0.001. This segment is responsible for training the generative adversarial network. The training process for GANs involves alternately training the discriminator and the generator. For training the discriminator, we use our synthetic data as the real data, creating labels for the real data, which are all ones. Then we get the discriminator's predictions for the real data. Then we compare the loss for the real data predictions. We then generate data using the generator and compute the discriminator's loss for the generated data. Note that the generator is producing the fake data by taking random noise of 1000 rows and 3 features so that the generator can produce good data of same dimensions. Also note that the levels for the generated data are considered to be all zeros. This D underscore loss underscore fake is the loss of the discriminator in predicting the levels of the generated data. The total loss for the discriminator is the sum of the losses for the real and fake data. Then we compute the gradients for the discriminator and update the discriminator's weights. We have trained the discriminator. Now we need to train the generator. We reset the gradients for the generator and get the discriminator's predictions for the fake data. We compute the generator's loss. The goal of the generator is to make the discriminator believe that the fake data is real. So when calculating the loss for the generator, we use the label 1. Therefore, the generator's loss is based on how well the discriminator was fooled by the fake data. A higher generator loss indicates that the discriminator easily identified the data as fake. We then compute the gradients for the generator and update the generator's weights. We print the losses for both the discriminator and the generator after each 1000 epochs. Again, the key idea behind training guns is that the generator tries to produce data that is indistinguishable from real data, while the discriminator tries to get better at distinguishing between real and fake data. Over iterations, both models improve, resulting in a generator that produces increasingly convincing data. The training is done. It is now the time to generate some fake data from random noise. Here I have random noise of 1000 rows and 3 columns. I give it to the trained generator. The generator gives me back 1000 rows each with 3 features. If the generator training worked correctly, then the second column of the generated data should be almost twice as the first. And the third column should be twice the second. Let us see, I am printing the first 10 rows here. In the first row, the value in the first column is 0.7998. The second column has a value of 1.660, which is almost twice the first. The value in the third column is 3.2724, which is almost twice the value in the second column. The pattern continues for the other rows showcasing that the generator can approximate the feature relationships of our original synthetic dataset. This Google Colab notebook is linked in the description below. Instead of a GAN, you could use a division-based generative model to generate data points. I have linked a video on division-based generative models in the description. Thank you and see you soon again.